Is this the human value you call friendship? Don't give me the Star Trek crap. It's too early in the morning. I first saw this novel on a shelf in a bookshop when I was a lot younger than I am now. And I'll be perfectly honest, back then it didn't particularly interest me. Over the years, as I've occasionally uh, thought back to some of the novels that I never read, I've always had a sort of feeling of regret that I never read this one. So when I saw it for 20p at a boot fair, I naturally jumped at the chance to get it. A look at the life and love of Sarah Bolgan, all mixed in with a superfluous plot to destroy the Federation, as well as an interstellar romance. Third person past tense with several first person diary entries, the prose flows pretty well and never gets caught up in dishing out excruciating detail. The scenes which take place on well known Star Trek worlds like Vulcan are, in my view, particularly well handled. A Star Trek novel was one of the first non kiddy novels that I ever read. Back in the day I was, I'm sad to say, put off by large word counts. I mean, even the word counts in those uh, little Ladybird books that were based on He-Man and uh, Transformers put me off. I mean, not for any reason other than I was a lazy bastard, I hasten to add. But if it hadn't been for Dark Mirror, I may never have developed the patience to discover Pratchett or Cornwall or Gaiman or any of the other uh, novels and authors that I've enjoyed reading over the years. So I'm always going to have a soft spot for Star Trek novels, even the ones that aren't that good. Fortunately, Sarek is actually quite good. But it is, alas a bit mixed. Reading this novel is like it's uh, it's like it's trying to be three different novels all at once. One is potentially awesome, one is a bit of cheesy fun, and the other is little more than some plot hole filling fan fiction. The fan fiction aspect comes with the main catalyst to events, a plot to <laughs> destroy the federation. The problem, aside from <laughs> trying to destroy the Federation, is that Crispin ties together so many little bits and pieces of Star Trek flotsam it was actually painful to read. I mean, perhaps someone who knows nothing of Star Trek would find such things interesting, although why someone with no Trek knowledge would pick a novel with a title that only has resonance for Star Trek fans is another question entirely. But as someone who has loved Star Trek for more than two decades now, I... <sighs> I don't know, it, it just felt like a die-hard fan saying, See? These aren't plot holes! Plus, some of the dialogue in these sections is unsubtle referential pap, and that does annoy me. The cheesy fun novel involves, of all things, an alien human love story. And, I'm sorry to say, the alien does say something along the lines of, Show me some more of this earth thing called kissing. Although, in all fairness, the character may have been taking the piss at that point. That said, there are a few moments in these sections that I really did enjoy. Although this part does have some relation to the main catalyst and suffers from some of the same plot hole filling, it nevertheless does have a sense of fun about it. I mean, it may be a little cheesy, but as far as I'm concerned it was exactly the right sort of cheese. But it's the potentially awesome part that angers me somewhat, as these parts give a glimpse as to what this novel could have been. These are the parts that deliver what the novel title suggests. They focus on the often rocky relationship between Sarek, Amanda and Spock, and are easily the best written parts of this novel. Although once again they do contain some filling of plot holes, it is handled with a far defter touch in these parts. I mean, they offer an absolutely fantastic but tragically brief insight into what it means to be Vulcan, and just how passionate a people they really are. Amanda's death was damn near perfectly handled, and is probably the best piece of Star Trek fiction since The Wrath of Khan. If you have no idea who Sarek and Amanda are, and you think that Spock is a baby doctor, then the best parts in this novel won't have as much resonance with you, and in all fairness, the rest probably won't interest you either. If you're a Trekkie, there's a fair amount of goodness locked away, but it's surrounded by things that are eye-rollingly, um, eye-roll worthy. Overall, this novel sadly doesn't quite deliver on the promise of its title, but it is nevertheless quite entertaining to read.